The views, comments, and opinions of the following program do not necessarily reflect those of Morris Media Studios, MorrisMediaLive.com, or its affiliates. Listener discretion is advised. Thank you so much. I get coffee delivered, everything. That's perfect. All right. Hey, everybody. I'm still like trying to get my stuff together. I am Jasmine Canick. And because this show doesn't technically have a name yet, I'm still figuring it out. We're just going to call it the Jasmine Canick Show. And basically what I do is come on um, once a week and kind of talk about hot topics, issues that are bugging me, ask you guys what's bugging you. Um, and just basically talk about it. So I'm doing two things at once here. I'm trying to like, you know, do something on social media and talk to you. So a couple of things. Let's see. I don't know where to start. Um, today the LAPD, well, what I thought, I actually thought this morning when I turned on the news that I was looking at the pilot for a new television show that was featuring the LAPD. But it actually turns out to be uh, body camera footage that was released um, today in accordance with the Los Angeles Police Department's agreement with the police commission on rolling out body footage with uh, body camera footage within 45 days. Except that what I saw this morning, I don't think it exactly met the standards for what the community was looking for in terms of body camera footage. It was heavily edited. It was heavily skewed to favor the police department. As a viewer, I felt as if they were trying to talk to me using this 18 minute video um, and let me know how stupid I am and that they had to explain every single thing in the video because I was too stupid to figure it out. I think that after talking to a lot of people in the community about about the uh, about the video being released, uh, a lot of people felt the same way. So the video had to do with the May 6th, um, 2018 in custody death of a 25-year-old by the name of Jose Chavez. And this happened in Newton Division in South L.A. And basically there was a 911 call that Mr. Chavez was seen standing in front of residences with a brick. And LAPD arrived. And he was basically mm, not really cooperating with them, at least if you go by what we were showed on the video, the heavily edited video, edited almost as if it was a television show video. Um, And over a course of two hours, they ended up subduing him using beanbags. They they did use um, non-lethal weapons to... Uh, basically disarm him and to to subdue him and to arrest him. And it was during or a little bit after the time that he was taken into custody that they noticed that he had become non-responsive. And Mr. Chavez, at 25 years old, ultimately um, passed away. And so this was the first video that the department released. And I just got to say, No, they need to go back to the drawing board and do that again. I think what the public wants in body camera footage is that they want the videos to be released unedited. Um, We don't really need their commentary. If we have questions, I think we're all capable enough of asking them those questions and they can answer them. I think that the quote, it was like an infomercial. I don't know what to call what they put out earlier infomercial, TV show pilot, documentary. I have no idea. Whatever that was, one, it probably cost us way too much money to produce, right? Us meaning, you know, taxpayers in the city of of Los Angeles. But two, you know, this adds to the conversation. It adds to the anger from the community about how the police department disseminates information. 
just give us the video. That's all we need. That that's it. We don't we don't need the extras. We don't need the commentaries. We don't need we just didn't need all of that. Um I think I have a little bit of the video I can show you. Um do we have the video queued up? Okay, it's fine. Just show it it point yeah. the officers request an additional unit and a supervisor. It's 13 it's everyone that's requesting Approximately four minutes later, Chavez becomes agitated and approaches the officers. The passenger officer, unsure at this point if Chavez was armed, drew his handgun from his holster and held it pointed toward the ground in what we call a low ready position. This position is permitted when an officer reasonably believes that the situation may escalate to the point when deadly force is necessary. Bear in mind that the angle of the body-worn video camera is capturing images at mid-chest level, so you may not be able to see the actual angle of the officer's weapon is not directed at the suspect's body. At this point, the officers also request a backup unit, which enables one or more patrol cars to activate their emergency lights and siren to respond should it become necessary. As the additional police officers arrive, Chavez runs south on Town Avenue toward Vernon, turning abruptly towards a home. Stay right there, dude. All right. Hey, stay right there, bud. Stay right there. Stay right there. We're trying to help you, dude. Relax. 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 I got you. I'll go over there. Hold on. Hold on. Hey, stay right there, man. Let him run, dude. Let him run. He's so, back yes, in his area. Uh, as you can see, there was, a, there was a lot of work put into that video. And I know that as often is the case in these types of situations after this quote unquote community briefing, I'm sure folks patted each other on the back. I'm sure Josh and his crew were like, yes, we did it. But. If I had to give them a letter grade, they would get a D. Literally, they would get a D. Like, this is not what the community had in mind. This is what the police department wanted to put out. And it, and as I said earlier, it was heavily skewed. And I'm not hating on the police department at all in this moment. I am not. But what I am saying is that this isn't what the community wanted. Just take the body camera footage load it in, press play. If there are questions from the media, if there are questions from the community about what we see on that video, um, on that video footage, we will ask those questions. I don't think we needed our hand held in the way that this 17, I think it was 17 or 18 mini, minute video did. So yeah, thumbs down on that. Go back to the drawing board. Uh, I'm sure being that this is Los Angeles and there are many, many uses of force with our police department, they will have plenty of opportunities and chances to get it right. So moving on last week, I think it was last week. It could have been this week. I mean, I got so much going on over here. There's a story um, that I was tagged in on Facebook um, where um, a, a black woman had posted a video about being at the um, at the Westin Hotel in Pasadena and being asked by a guy who was passing himself off as a, a health inspector whether or not her and her daughter had um, bothered to take a shower before they were using the pool at the Westin. I mean. What, what the hell? <laughs> like, that was crazy. I think we have some of that video as well that we can uh, kind of look at to recap and refresh ourselves on that story. Yes. Well, how would you like to handle this okay. in an appropriate way? You so had no I'm, right to do what you did. I simply asked them if they showered. Okay, I'm we have our general manager coming up right. here. Okay. Because that's I mean, part of the rules. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm tired of getting into pools and people consider bass versus... And she told me but you didn't ask anyone else. else. You didn't ask anyone else. You, you, ask you asked me if I saw them. You're the only one in the pool. pool. There are plenty of people over there in the goddamn pool. You're the only one in the pool. There are three other people over there. There are three other people over there. You didn't ask them. They're right over there 
right now. They've been over there. When you That's asked so me, they were there. Relax. Be I don't have to fucking relax. Why not? Be quiet. Be quiet. Why I not? The way you feel, I think you it was not a home judge. He had no business. It's everybody's it. business. We, we travel all the have time. You Google it. Google the diseases of poor. We travel. You didn't take it off. Take off stairs so she don't hear all of this. Yeah. Because it's. It's only a shower you're going to let you, don't worry. Stop at the manager's hotel yeah. in two seconds. Now, I don't curse a lot whenever, I don't care if it is a podcast. I don't care if I am on the radio or television. I tend not to curse. It's just who I am. But that's some bullshit right there. Um, I don't, you know, I, I will say this again. The election of our current president has emboldened a lot of people in this country and if they're not careful, they are going to end up getting their asses kicked because everybody is not going to go for that. I can tell you that over the weekend, I was um, here in California, in Southern California. I traveled out of L.A., about two hours out of L.A., to go and visit a very dear friend of mine who is in the hospital. This particular hospital had, um, had we were like in ICU, um, and they had two patients to a room. And so my friend's bedmate, roommate, was an older white woman who, got to tell you, for being in the hospital, was dressed up like she was getting ready to go out to dinner or out to see a play, but literally sitting in her bed, pearls and all, you know, that that's how she got down. Well, she's talking on the speakerphone to someone who is exactly like her. I could just tell from the voices, right? So we get to hear the whole conversation. And midway through the conversation, the person she's talking to on the phone says, I hear other voices in the room. And so my friend's roommate says, well, yes, I have a roommate and she has a guest. Well, maybe you should tell them that they should stop talking until we're done talking on the phone. And my friend and I, who are both black women, looked at each other like, (laughs) like, what is this world coming to? I, you know, I don't know. Every single day we're seeing more and more incidents around white people calling the police on black folks. We have this incident with this guy faking that he's a health inspector at a pool at a hotel. And, you know, more power to the folks who went out there and protested at the West End because that absolutely is unacceptable. Um, You know, I almost, I, I did not grow up in the 60s or the 50s or even the 40s or the 30s. Um, By the time I came along, I wouldn't say that things were great for black folks, but they were definitely a lot better than they were for my parents' generation, my grandparents' generation, and my great-grandparents' generation. But with all of these stories that seem to keep popping up, it it feels like we're sinking back into that time. And it's it's really disheartening. And, you know, we got to stay strong and we cannot let people walk over us. We cannot let people um, disrespect us in that manner. Um, and sometimes when I look at these stories, I'm like, who better hurt than me? Because, you know, everybody doesn't have bail money at the ready, you know. And we know how we can get down sometimes when we are disrespected like that. I mean, you're asking her if her and her daughter took a shot. I mean, that is absolutely ridiculous. I hope they find out who that man is and they shame him to no end, like literally to no end. Like, I really hope they figure out. They may have for all I know, but that was absolutely ridiculous. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was... um, There was a UCLA study that was released that um, said that um, the high cost of housing in L.A. is what is driving up the homeless rate. And in other news, water is wet. Right. So um, I right. I I found that very interesting. I, I looked at the study. I read the study. Many of you that follow me know that a huge issue of mine probably even bigger than police misconduct (laughs) and police brutality is housing Um, and particularly housing in Los Angeles and how I personally believe that this city is trying to drive black folks out of this city. I personally believe that we have a mayor in office who wants a certain kind of Angelino and that most of us, particularly black folks do not fit that mold and that we are being intentionally pushed out of the city by the high cost of housing 
What continues to bother me about studies like the UCLA study and the homeless population count that we do is that we are so fixated on unsheltered homeless people. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't be, but the focus also needs to be, as I continue to say, on the people who are living in their parents' houses, living with their friends, living with their other relatives, living on the couches, on the floors, in the back rooms, in the garages of folks, sleeping in their cars, in the driveways of friends and relatives' houses, anything but to be in that category of quote-unquote unsheltered. There's not enough focus that is put on people who are literally on the brink of homelessness, you know, every single month with the high cost of housing. There's not enough focus put on the people who are spending $500 a week to live in a motel and can't save up enough money for first and last and whatever else they came up with now that they want from folks. They want your arm, your firstborn. They want you to sign in blood. They want you to have a FICO score of, you know, a huge FICO score. They want your credit score to be over 750. I mean, the the hoops and hurdles that landlords are putting on prospective tenants and renters is absolutely ridiculous. And it, and there are only, they're in this, in the way that it's going, there's only a certain group of people who can afford to move, who can afford and who can qualify to live in these, in, in, in the, in apartments here in this city. And so this UCLA study that was released just made me have to do another sigh and say, you know, here we are again, focused on the unsheltered and not, focused on the people who um, are are barely making it and who um, are living in cities where there is no rent control and where, you know, if the mood strikes the landlord, they can raise the rent legally and you're just asked out. I think that um, not enough of us are, are, are really pushing that, that narrative and letting our electeds know, you know, look, there is no reason why people should be paying $2,500 to live in certain parts of South LA. I'm sorry. Uh, I am not trying to diss South LA, but I'm just keeping it real. We all know that there are parts of South LA that, you know, look, you know, the same or worse than, you know, 19, not before the events of 1992, where much hasn't changed. Um, and it's still relatively dangerous. You go on Trulia, you go on Zillow, you go on Craigslist, you look at how much they are charging to live on, you know, I don't know, the east side of South LA. It is absolutely ridiculous. Um, the average rent now is somewhere around $2,400 um, a month. And that, and that's ridiculous. You know, and again, I go back to these, oh, we want to raise the wage. We want to raise the wage. Okay. Keep raising that wage because $15 is not going to get you near $2,400 a month and all your living expenses paid. Neither is $20 an hour. So we have a lot of work to do. And, um, whenever these studies come out and people are talking about it around the water cooler or the conversation comes up, you know, you really need to remind them that it's not just about the unsheltered homeless and it is also about those of us who are barely making it from month to month. Um, and it's about those of us who can't even afford to move. I mean, think about it like this. There are people who are probably in relationships right now <laughs> where they may be getting their ass kicked literally right now by their partner, but because of the high cost of living, they're not going anywhere because they can't afford to move out. There are divorced couples, divorced folks that still live in the same house. Why? Because it's more cost effective for them to live together. They know that they cannot separate and be able to maintain and take care of them. I mean, there are all kinds of weird and and ultimately dangerous situations that I'm sure a lot of folks are in in Southern California just because we're doing anything we can to keep a roof over our heads and we're not getting much help from City Hall. We're not getting much help from the Board of Supervisors or the state of California. Um, and I can go on and on and on and talk about that because that's one of my issues. Um, one of the last things I wanted to talk about was a post that I made on my uh, Facebook page that seemed to, I guess, upset a few people. 
So I wrote a post that everybody wants to be gay. Well, it's true. All of a sudden, being gay is like the end thing right now. Every, every time I turn around, someone's announcing they're gay or announcing this or announcing that. So a couple of things about that. One, I had to check myself because the reality is everybody isn't necessarily announcing that they're gay. They're usually announcing that they're bisexual or pansexual. And what I basically said about that, and I wasn't trying to be funny or make fun of people who identify as being bi or pansexual, but it is basically... I'm not, you're not committing to one gender or the other. Like, you know, you're free to have sex with whoever you want to have sex with on any given day. And that is why you have labeled yourself as such. Don't take that shit out on me. I'm just calling it like I see it and how a lot of other people see it. Not saying that you're not part of the community. I'm not saying that people don't want you to be a part of the community. But as I understand it, that is the definition. What I do want to say to all the people who are joining the Gay, the gay are becoming members of the gay club or waking up and realizing that all, you know, they want to be gay or whatever is that everybody got to pay dues, you know, so as free as you are to go on Facebook or Instagram or whatever and post about how all of a sudden you're bi, you're pan, you're lesbian, you're gay, you're A, B, C, D, E, F, whatever letter of the alphabet it is. Remember that there were people that came before you that put in a lot of work for you to have that freedom, for you to feel like you can go on social media and announce to the world who you are without repercussions, without fear of losing your job or losing your family. And that when you join the community, you need to put your work in, too, for future generations. All is not well in the gay community, and particularly with black gay folks who continue to struggle with the fact that we're just black in America, as well as the homophobia that exists within our community and for me, a lot of times, more importantly, the racism that exists within the, the white gay community. So, you know, after you finish celebrating the fact that you have come out and you're claiming whatever letter of the alphabet it is, you need to figure out what organization, what group you can connect with to, to do some work and to give back and to support the community. Because it's not all about pride. It's not all about clubs. It's not all about parties. You know, a lot of a lot of people struggled and went through a lot. Like I said, for you to be where you are and feel as comfortable as you are to come out. Especially on television, on the radio, and on social media. And so, you know, I think some people took that the wrong way. Like I was trying to hate on on bi folks or pansexual folks. No, not my cup of tea. Definitely. But, you know, it is what it is. I mean, if there is another definition you have for it, I'm I'm always welcome to hearing it. But, you know, I look things up. I have friends who identify with certain things and this is what I'm told it is. I'm old school. So I, you know, I identify with the LGB and the T. I am learning to accept all of these other letters that people are coming up with to define their newfound freedom. But it's going to take everyone time, even those of us in the community. Um, But yeah, so those were the the main things that were on my mind. I'm sure a lot of people have, (laughs) wait, there's a club. Yes, Carla, there is a club and you can go on, they'll, they'll send you your blender and your membership card and everything. And you just renew it annually. If you, if you change what part of the, the community you are, if you move from L to T or L to B or whatever, just update it annually. Keep your membership card updated and you'll always have access to the club. Um, I'm trying to see what else other people are saying. But yeah, those were some of the things that were... I knew you would be on it. Thank you, Natalie. Um, those are some of the things that were on my mind. I mean, I'm always welcome to hearing what you guys want to talk about at any time. You can drop me a message. My website is jasmineonline.com. Um, I'm you, obviously, if you're watching me on Facebook, you know, my Facebook page, my Twitter handle is my first name, Jasmine, J A S M Y N E. Um, and I'm like, I'm always interested in having conversations, but I'm also interested in having real conversations. I don't want to do that watered down shit. I'm not trying to dance around, you know, the bush and not hurt people's feelings. If we're going to talk about it, we really going to talk about it. And I think on my closing note, I'm going to say this. I sent out a tweet earlier today. You know, this country has been in a furor over um, the separation of families at the border. Now, I do have my thoughts on that, but I'm not going to get into my thoughts because my time, my time with you is just about up. But what I will say is that 
this country has a long history of separating families that come to it. Okay. And so if we want to go back a couple hundred years to when we were snatched up and brought over here, if we wasn't separated at the time of our kidnapping, we certainly were separated from our families once we hit that auction block. Okay. So let us not act like this is some new phenomenon in America. No, America has a history that was built on separating families and built on separating communities of people. Uh, and, and, and my ancestors, and I'm sure many of the folks who are watching this, who are also black, our ancestors, you know, are proof of that. And I would just leave it at that. And so until next week, folks have a great week, get it done, get it done, get it done. And we'll come back and talk about some more issues. Thanks.